heard from DJ Shub here. Welcome back to Breakfast Television. You'll be hearing from him throughout the morning here on our special on Breakfast Television. 215. That's the number that woke up the world. It has been just months since unmarked graves were found in Kamloops, the first place to confirm bodies of residential school children. And that led to the discovery of over a thousand more across Canada. Reporter Lisa Yuzda joins us now. She went to the community and heard from the local chief there. Good morning to you, Lisa. Good morning. Uh, can yep. you... Sh please do go ahead. I was just saying, yeah, I, I went and, and it was... You talk about the 215 and you really... You feel it when you're there. We, we talked... I talked to Chief Roseanne Casimir just up the hill um, from where these children are buried and in these unmarked graves, it's now a sacred site and you really do feel... The presence there and and the chief was really quite clear that it's possible that here as well as other places across the country that there are going to be more unmarked graves to be found. Lisa I, I can't even imagine what it was like as you mentioned to physically step foot on the grounds and to have those conversations no doubt an emotional experience. Um, I'm looking forward to hearing your piece here. Finally, there's actually something to, you know, provide and show proof that, you know what, the stories are real. What happened to them was real. The pain that they suffered and endured was real. As real as the remains of 215 children buried here. They never made it back home from Kamloops Indian Residential School. And that reality has lit an awakening in the rest of the country to the horrors of Canada's Indian Residential School system. 150,000 children taken from their homes, their families, many to suffer physical, sexual and emotional abuse. Thousands did not survive. So many of the stories about children, missing, burial, um, incinerators, you just kind of, you name it, you know, my grandmother shared it. To Kamloops, to Shwepnik Chief Roseanne Casimir sharing her journey, her community's journey, ahead of this National Day for Truth and Reconciliation. The stories passed down from her grandmother and her mother, both survivors. For them, you know, if they were here today, they would be probably thinking, wow, the world is actually listening. Because until now, until the devastating confirmation down the hill behind her, the stories and pain laid bare time and again by survivors did not resonate beyond Indigenous communities. Right here at the Columbus of Schwemmick, they knew the direct impacts, they knew the stories, they knew their stories, and they knew the missing children that didn't come home. When the news broke, all eyes turned to the Tekemlips to Schwemmick with Casimir at the helm, feeling the weight of her responsibility to the Indigenous children and families torn apart by the system, her job to guide them through this moment in history. How could this be finally coming to light and why is this coming to light now? And, you know, the time is here and the time is now and, and all, these, all these thoughts were going through my head and thinking about children. They're buried here and, you know, the families that it's going to be impacting. It's just, yeah, um, it was really hard. And it was only the beginning for her, finding those families, having those painful personal conversations continue. There's children from other provinces like Alberta and over into the States and the Yukon. And, you know, reaching out to them and, and sharing with them directly what had happened, how science is now confirming, you know, our, our survivors. The 215 found here grew to hundreds, then thousands across the country and continent. Ground searches continued to find more children at other residential school sites who never made it home. Our truths are being heard. Next is education. Next is that continued path forward with everyone. 
For Casimir, it's time for all Canadians to carry this weight. This includes knowing the 94 calls to action from the Truth and Reconciliation Commission and the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples. I think that people really need to really put in the work. We need to be that change for our children and future generations. And we really do need to reconcile history, you know, with um, First Nations and non-First Nations, but also the history of Canada. This means reconciling the damage done, the pain inflicted by Canada's residential schools. For so long, so many of our people, it was a lot of shame. It was grief, it was trauma that they had buried deep with inside of them. And you can see it through the generational impacts that it has caused, especially when you've got loss of language, loss of culture, loss of you know, um, malnourishment and all those different things and their ability to be a parent because all those things were stripped from them. And holding leaders to account. Indigenous issues falling off the top of the agenda in this last election, despite the ongoing confirmation of children's remains. It shouldn't have to be a battle. It should not have to be a battle with the politicians. We need to keep on the politicians and also with the Roman Catholic Church to be able to make some really good steps towards reconciliation. After we spoke, the Canadian Catholic bishops apologized unequivocally for harm done and announced an Indigenous contingent will meet with the Pope before the end of this year. While well, leaders do have their role in reconciliation, as much work sits on the shoulders of Canadians. Listening to um, survivors who attended residential schools and finding about and learning about the history of the residential schools is definitely also a part of that process moving forward. Canadians choosing, she says, to take an interest, to get educated, to ensure healing happens. We as parents have a responsibility to ensure that we really be that change for our children. And this is something I know that we can do together. It's not going to be easy. It's going to be a long road. While well, working to find and honour all the children who never came home and ensuring their history is reconciled with Canada's history, lights honour those already found. You know, and Chief Roseanne Casimir telling me that their community and all communities are striving and thriving while trying to integrate these findings and that are more to be found and talking about really hitting home the message that education, that it's up to each one of us to educate ourselves about this history and then bring it into Canada's history and teach it to future generations. Because this is the beginning, she's saying a long road ahead. You know, we found these numbers of hundreds of children in Canada, thousands across North America, but there are likely more to be found. Lisa, thank you so much for this piece, and uh, thank you to Chief Casimir for the access, being able to hear Indigenous voices, and that's what's, that's what's so important for us to do, not just today, but always. So thank you for that. Appreciate it. My pleasure. Thank you so much.